Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It's been a while since I've done that intro. It's been like a, a month or so, maybe even longer than that. Welcome back to the Genius Cast Season 3. It's been long enough, and I hope that it's not going to be like this every single time it, some stuff came up. I uh, had some trouble finding people to talk to, and because a bunch of people... I, I, we're all busy these days. We're all busy. And <clears throat> I also had real-life stuff going on, job and work and my girlfriend and everything. And But we're we're back. We're, we're, we're back recording, and I would say this episode is going to be pretty unique. We're not talking to a game developer. We're not talking to a voice actor. We're not talking to anybody like that. We're talking to who is heralded as the Max Mode King in the FNAF fan game community. This man is Costa Vesta, and as I said, uh, Max Mode King, and you'll figure out why he has that title later on in this episode. How you doing, man? All good, all good. Thank you for having me on the show, bud. Very excited to be here. Oh, you're very welcome, and yeah, uh, this is this is exciting. This is kind of a, a new thing for the Genius Cast. There, we haven't had someone like you on here before, so... A bit of background on Costa. He is very good at games, not just FNAF fan games. He's good at all games. He's good at Mario Kart. He's good at Smash. I mean, he's good at every game I've seen him play. He's got a specific skill. When it, he's like Tom, I don't know if you've ever heard of my friend Tom Costa, but um, <clears throat> you, you and him both have some some very raw talent that I don't have. I mean, I'm, are you good at shooters at all? Nah, shooters are not my like genre that I touch real. Well, yeah, t I would I'd ask because Tom plays shooters, but I was just wondering. But like, yeah, I, yeah I've yeah, seen yeah, yeah. you're you're really you're really good at Smash and Mario Kart from what I've seen. But uh, basically, Costa here has a knack for beating all max modes in a lot of different FNAF fan games, uh, and that takes a lot of skill. And one thing that sticks out to me about Costa is that uh, back. In 2019, when Final Fantasy Rebooted came out, uh, that I still hold that as Mickey slash Mall Rat's most difficult all max mode ever created. I, I, I will stand by that. But apparently, it sounds like that you've been testing the Lost Ones Treasure Island, and you and he told me that you told him that that might beat Bud's Rebooted in difficulty with the all max mode. Is that right? Yeah, I would say so. 100, percent 100 percent so far. Gosh, uh, great. Anyways, uh, I bring that up because um, back in Financial Bud Rebooted, you beat the all max mode in that game before the changes Mickey made, uh, specifically the Winston patch. Uh, originally, there was a... It wasn't really a bug, but it was kind of a little finicky thing where Winston would appear in the living room and he's his meow didn't start right away. So say you'd be in the cameras and then Bud will come in or something and you'd have to go and click the toilet or the thing, maybe the toilet or the doorbell, and then suddenly you couldn't click it because Winston was in there, but he had a delay of like one or two seconds uh, where he didn't start meowing. And that would screw me up. Like I screw a lot of people up, but you'd beat it without that change, which was, I, I couldn't fathom that. Because that, that's what would cause a lot of my debts, but you did that. You did that, and also that was before the patch where Mickey made it where, I think specifically on custom night, uh, people would, would move every every time, or people would talk every time they move, but you beat it on that version where they didn't. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah it was that, yeah. They, in the new version, yeah, they talk each time they move to new rooms. Right, and he made that change only for all Max, if I remember correctly. I think so. I'm not too sure, but I think you're right. It's been so long. Yeah, but um, maybe later on in this episode we can get some insight on how you're so good at these games because i mean so the i mean you're you're very well known for beating um chuck e cheese's all max mode and what i've heard that that that's a just i've never played is that chuck e cheese uh, is that the remastered or the original final to chuck e cheese what uh, rebooted like the one by radiance right and apparently that's like a super super hard one and you oh, did yeah, that yeah. And, and you're very well known for that particularly and so we'll uh maybe we'll get some insight on how you're you're so good at max modes but anyway um 
I'm going to try to be more consistent later on down the road with more episodes of this show. But uh, excuse me, if you want to be part of future episodes, a.k.a. have your questions answered by whichever guest I have on, uh, be sure to look out for my community tab, Twitter or Discord posts about these upcoming episodes. And you can drop your questions on those respective social media platforms. And I will ask those questions to the particular guest. So that's how you can get involved if you are interested in being in a future episode. But we're going to start off with our community tab questions. Are you ready to go, Costa? Let's do it. All right, let's begin. Our first question is from DendanX3. My question is, is it stressful trying to do all these max modes? It is, especially, um, I guess we're going to start already with the Chuck E. Cheese talk. It will come up a lot, so. Oh, yeah. Uh, th that one... Because the or how it took it took me twenty hours to beat. I'm pretty sure it was twenty hours, and like eighteen hours on camera or sixteen hours, I think, like on like live streams and everything. I only did four hours off stream and like some minor testing, but that one was so stressful because I literally like had like two hundred people watching me live, and I was like, oh my god, I just want to beat this. Like I would get to five a.m., five a.m., and die and die and just. It became, it did become stressful, but at the same time, having like a chat being so supportive makes you want to keep going. And that's genuinely the only reason why I kept going and beat it at the end. Oh, yeah. Because I had the support of the chat. Yeah, having the chat cheering you on definitely helps. That's that's how it felt when I was when I was trying to beat the, you know, Buds Rebooted All Max and then um, the All Max of the original Maniac Mania. I remember doing those both live and seeing everybody like cheer for you and then like scream and jump up and down when you finally do it there there's something that's like so cathartic about that and it, it's it's not it's not the same when you just upload it in video form because everybody's like cheering for you in the comments but there's something different about doing it live and that's yeah so you, so you had how long ago was that when you beat the Chuck E. Cheese one? Uh, I think it, I think the game came out July 4th last year. I think I beat it at the end of July, like 22nd of July. So it's been almost like 10 months. Dang, that's been a while. Oh my gosh, July of 21 was already almost a year ago? Gosh. Yeah, no, I can't believe it either. Time flies way too quickly. Uh, no kidding, man. Gosh. All right, our next question is from TFM102. How did it feel to become the king of all max modes in FNAF, and what inspired you to become as good at the all max modes that you are? I didn't really, like, have much of, like, originally. Like, the max modes to me, they were, like, interested to me where it was the maximum difficulty. It was the hardest challenge in the game. I wanted, like, an actual challenge in the game to be... And all max modes took me by an interest be like, oh. And like how it's how, how the game can be optimized to the optimal level. And I've seen some like other FNAF fan game, like not creators, but like players who play FNAF fan games and all that. And the optimization that they do is so like incredible to watch. Like, like FNAF fan games max modes are also like a rhythm game. I would even describe it. It's literally like a rhythm game. Yeah, that's that's a good comparison, especially when uh, looking at FNAF One. It's like a very like not just band games, but actually the like the other like FNAF games in general, like especially FNAF One and Two, I think are particular examples. It really is like a rhythm game. It's a very like any sort of error in that rhythm will throw everything out of whack, and that's why I'm not good at most max modes because a lot of the max modes do require very very precise movements and clicks and decisions and I, I i'm just not good at that so i commend you for for going through all that and and for anybody that can do that because i'm just i i mean i clearly i i have adhd so i i'm not good at multitasking for anybody who actually didn't know that i actually do have adhd i just uh haven't really talked about it that much but that affects my ability to multitask and uh, it, it's it's not it's not easy for me to do multiple things at once, and that's why I don't do a lot of all max modes because I'm not good at multitasking. I'm not good at staying in a rhythm. All right, our next question is from uh, Tropical Emperor, and his question is: uh, Whenever Five Nights at the Krusty Krab Chapter Three comes out on May 9th, can you play it? Of course, I'll 100% play it. I saw like I saw Bud's video like yesterday, 
and oh my god i saw the game and it just blow my mind I, like it's a game that i'm 100 percent gonna play it no matter what whether i beat the max mode god who knows but i'm gonna at least try to beat knights one through six or knights one through five however month however nights they are in the game because the game has such an interesting gimmick that i haven't seen in fnaf fan games in a long long time like sure you have the lights on the left and right actually i should probably said about spoilers but yeah well that was shown in the in the trailer so you know i don't think that's a that's a spoiler but uh yeah, yeah it, it's uh I, i'll talk a little bit about it since you know probably most people listening to this have seen my video on it uh it takes place in a like a a, a cold war era navy underwater navy base which i think is a super unique location for a fnaf fan game and you got to work with the you know 70s era technology and like what costa was talking about with the gimmick is that like you got to use that technology there's like a you can turn your power off to recharge it and you got to uh you have to manage your power usage by, you know, you can turn off everything and turn down the power usage like low, or you can turn on like things like the, it's, it's kind of hard to explain. And it, the game does not explain that to you. Like it's like, it's not handholdy at all. There's like a very vague training tape that plays. And it's just in, in just a nutshell, it's just like you are given limited electricity, blah, blah, blah there you go have fun and like it doesn't really tell you much about what to do and you got to kind of figure it out yourself which i like i I'm, I'm good with the game not holding your hand because there are a lot of fnaf fan games that tell you exactly what you have to do and i'm i mean it's it's fine but if there's always something i keep on using the word cathartic i, I think it's super satisfying to figure out everything and, and uh, Dakota actually was talking to me about that later he was like you know I'm really glad that you were able to figure out you know what to do because the mechanics are kind of obtuse and the game's kind of vague but um but yeah I, I have not played past night two I uh I only recorded the first two nights and I'm probably gonna record maybe more of it tomorrow I'm not sure maybe Monday afternoon I don't know but yeah, you're gonna like it, Casa. It's it's very well done. I really like the way he's doing it, and we'll have to see. Um, it, you, I think you'd be able to do the all max mode. Fun fact, actually, did you did you see uh, Dakota's tweet earlier about uh, max mode being beatable? He actually tweeted that today. I have not. I don't follow him on Twitter. I can shoot. You, I can I can shoot you his uh his Twitter at um after we're done here. Uh, but yeah, well. he just he just confirmed today that all max is doable. So. Hey, there, maybe there's your cue, right? That's always lovely to know. When something is beatable, even like it just makes it much more easier to be like, okay, this is beatable. I should be able to do this. Mm -hmm. Why can't I do this? Mm -hmm. All right, our next one is from Philip Underwood. Out of all the max modes of FNAF fan games, what was the one max mode that gave you a lot of trouble? I mean, there's a lot, like Chuck E. Cheese was by far, like that one has given me a memory. <laughs> of a nightmare literally just truly a true nightmare of to remember for like my whole time but another like difficult one because most like because this is gonna shock you like for Final Nights with Bud rebooted that took me like two hours only to beat really like I saw my recording footage it was like an hour and 40 minutes long like it wasn't that bad like, I think that one is by far the craziest one I've done. I can't remember any other, like, max modes that have taken me a long time. Um, actually, there is one. There's another one. This was, like, way back before I did YouTube videos or anything. But, uh, Sister Location for FNAF. Oh, The 1020 man. mode. That, oh, yeah. that took me a while. That took me, like, three days to beat, I think it was. Dang. It was, like, very difficult. Yeah, I'll never forget uh, Daco's reaction to beating that. It's it's very iconic. Did you have you seen that his reaction to beating that? I think it's even more celebratory than when he beat fifty twenty mode. 
Yeah, no, that one was insane. And people have like been doing like pre patch versions of Sister Location and all that. And I'm like, what? <laughs> How can you do that already? Like, it's insane. Like, I thought the patch version was like so hard, but they do the pre patch versions of it. What was changed in the patched version? Because I never, I never played Custom Night of Sister Location, so I, I don't know much about it. I think it was something with the power of how long the night was on the twin on the Golden Freddy mode. I think it was one of those two. I can't be. I can't quite remember. Oh, okay. I think it was one of those. Like I think. I think I might be wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I think the normal custom night is like seven minutes long. I think the Golden Freddy mode got reduced to six minutes. I think. Okay, and I'm sure somebody will, will in the comments, will uh, confirm if that's incorrect or not. We'll have to see. Yeah, for sure. All right, our next one is from Speedersome. I think that's Speedersome, Speedersome. Uh, I'm not sure how that's pronounced, uh, but let me know, Speedersome, if that's the correct pronunciation. Uh, he has three questions. Uh, the first one is, when did you become part of Mallrats team? That was... Back, I think, second anniversary of Mac Tonight, if I remember correctly. Because he made, like, a Discord post where he was, like... I think he was talking about, like, Speedy and something with the window. And he was, like, looking for a mechanic for Speedy. And I remember I would always, like... I was DMing Morat about, like, Oh, this can be Speedy's mechanic, but the mechanics that I came up with were, like, not good at all. They were kind of garbage. It was just a foxy clone. Ooh, such a revolutionary gameplay. Oh over here. yeah, for sure. I think <laughs> I think it was I, a yeah. what, what it ended up as was was pretty good. I think that was a yeah yeah no no yeah yeah the ending like yeah how he ended up was really good I would say. But the window mechanic of how I came up with that was I took a break and then I went for a shower. It was like during nighttime, and I forgot to open the window. So the window fogged up and I thought, why don't we do that? So I told him about that and I thought, why don't we use that? Like the window fogs up and then, you know, the animatronic can't see. So they will just go away because they can't see. So I never I knew that, that. Was much more creative that. So every like literally the window spray mechanic is based off of you taking a shower. Oh my gosh. Wow. <laughs> Like, I never would have thought that. Like, I don't remember seeing... I never even asked Nikki like, what that was based on. Like, Oh, no, I didn't even tell him. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's hilarious. Wow. Okay. So, whenever so whenever somebody plays Mike Tonight's second anniversary and you spray the window, just be reminded that it's based off of after Costa took a shower. You can you can have that have that as food for thought whenever you're playing that game. Uh, Spiorsum's next question is: What FNAF fan games have you voice acted in? Uh, there has been like a good amount of like Warrior games I've voice acted in because I play like all of the Warrior fan games and I'm very close with the community of that. I have I have done those Knights of Warriors three. I have done Five Nights of Warriors the Clock, and I'm gonna be coming back on Five Nights uh, Night of Warriors Rise of the Corruption. So I'm gonna be coming back to that, and I think that's all the Warrior games really. The other one, the other games I've voice acted in, I'm, I haven't been like too proud of. They've been like meh. And his last question is, does the antivirus still haunt you to this day? Is that a reference to something that I'm not understanding? Yeah, so that's a it's a it's a lovely story to tell you. So um it's about Chuck E. Cheats. <laughs> he had again. Uh so when I was doing 1020 mode, right? I got to 6 a.m., right? And but the thing is, my antivirus detected a weird change because the game save file is located within your documents and some like my antivirus has like a protection within the documents folder so i bit true nightmare twice in a row and the antivirus each time would go to 6 a.m would crash the game and then i wouldn't get the cutscene or the star to prove so i would assume that that screwed up everything then 
Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, yeah. I didn't get the cutting or anything. Yeah. Wow, that's it was lame. so bad. That's lame, dude. Jeez. Yeah. All right, next one is from Frogger25. Are you still in Eternal Despair from Costume? Uh, that's another one. <laughs> oh, of course I am. That guy, whew, he's been giving me literal nightmares. Because he's, lit he's literally the bane of, like, the 1020 mode in that game. He's literally, like, the Because he's a character where, like, you can't fully, like, counter... That his mechanic is pretty much you have to watch him throughout the camera systems and then once he gets to your office you'll like disable your doors uh, yeah like the door from closing the gate i mean so you would have to watch him throughout five cameras and then once he left the final camera he would come to the gate and then like you wouldn't be able to close it and he was really difficult to deal with Jeez, that that's uh, that sounds very frustrating no, it was. There's been many deaths. Many, many deaths to him. Gosh. It's like, yeah, there, there's there's multiple realities of the just dead Costas everywhere. Rest in peace. All right, our next question is from Mida Games. What was your favorite all-20 mode? Favorite? Hmm. I think one that I really, like, unironically enjoyed doing was, um... So... I was playing um, Final Fantasy Sonic's Make Mania Infinite. That's what it's called now. Infinite. And I did like, I beat it throughout like three different ways. One was like normally. The second one was doing it with like no power outage. And the third one was doing it with like no audio. I literally like, muted the game and beat it like the whole max mode on that with no audio. It was actually really fun to be honest. Dude, Smiler told me you did that, and I couldn't believe it. I was like, I could, I barely can get to 1 a.m. with audio. How did you do that? I, it's not that bad, because most characters, are like, you don't really, like, need too much audio. Like, yeah, sure, they are, like, a selected few, which they become, like, hell. But most of, for the most part, it's not too bad. You just have to be, like, more aware of their timers and how long they take to come. Because I know, like, Nightmaric, he takes about 17 seconds usually to come for his first attack so okay you see the timer 70 seconds put the camera down look where his like tentacle is close the door and etc all right next question is from just damien for how many years have you been playing fnaf and how did you decide to start playing it funny enough i've never played the first four i've only played after the fourth game i've ever like played the fnaf, uh, FNAF games I didn't play one, two, three, or four because I've just seen too many YouTube videos on it that I didn't really like have an interest on playing on myself. Sister Location was like the first official FNAF, FNAF game that I played back in 2015 or was it 2016? I can't remember 20, when it released. 2016. Oh my god, six years. Yeah, man. Anyways. Like October, October, uh, God, what, what, what day in October? Well, I know that October of, of this year think, marks six yeah, years. Yeah, I think it was like yeah, October seventeenth, I think, or something like that. Mid mid October, I think it was. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Anyway, so I didn't play FNAF games till that point, but beforehand, I used to play a lot of like the fan games. I played the classics one like Warriors, Sonics. Uh... I, I probably played some other ones, but those two were like really big ones from memory. Like those two I loved a lot back then. All right, our next one is from Micro. It's an interesting one. Uh, will you play Finance of Candies 3's Final Night with challenges like Frogger 25? To be honest, I, bre I haven't ever beaten the normal Final Night. So I don't think I, I have to... either. Or maybe I have. Yeah. I can't remember. I, I, I actually wait. How do I? I don't remember. I don't think I have actually. No. no, no. I remember this because I found the way to do it. But basically, back in the day, I think the the game was so. I, I don't know which version we played it on, but there was a version which so which was so broken that it made the final night impossible. And the way you would beat it was to hide under the desk for the entire night. And then Vinny wouldn't kill you. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I think I remember seeing some people do that. 
and I, of course that ended up being fixed but like gosh doing it normally it, it it's so hard it's so hard oh yeah i think it's way harder than like the shadow rat challenge or anything like that within the game it's probably the hardest thing i would say oh yeah for sure because at least Shadow Rat, right, he has, like, really predictable movements. Like, sure, he's quick and all, but that's all he is, really. Just quick. Yeah, he's just fast. While Vin yeah, while Vini, like, goes around, does circular motions, goes to the other side of the room, and then... Like, it takes, like, one in-game hour <laughs> to do one attack. Oh, yeah, it's long. And then he can easily kill you if you mess up just a little bit. Yeah, so... Personally... I don't think so I'll do it. Maybe I will one day randomly, but for the moment, I think I'll pass. I want to save my sanity. Yeah, definitely. All right, next one is from Adriana Kanska. Will you, Costa, will you speedrun all of the FNAF fan games? Okay. Yes, so, all of them. Literally, every oh. all, all 25,000 of them on Game Joel. You start yeah. now. Any any percent speed run, <laughs> complete all of them. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what the question came up. One day, I think I did it for a joke. Was um, I don't know if you played this Sonic fan game, but it was uh called Final Fantasy Sonic Three Reburned. I played that, and as a joke, I put a speed run timer as a joke because I wanted to see how it would go. <laughs> and it was like the first ever like Sonic game that someone ever speed run it wasn't really a speed run it was just me playing the game and just having a timer but no <laughs> i don't think i'll be doing a speed run unless it can actually be well speed runnable because most fnaf games well it's 12 to 6. you can't really speed run that can you no i don't think so unless hey you know maybe they got some tricks i don't know some time manipulation maybe then but cd plus all right, next one is from Glitch. Uh, what's next for you now that you've beaten all max modes in FNAF? And then what's the next game you plan on beating all max mode for? Well, by the time we're recording this, I don't know when it will be uploaded. But I want to do Krusty Crab Chapter 3. That's what I'm really interested in at the moment to do. It's because that game seems insane. And like, Steelhead... What's the name, like, what's the main antagonist's name? I ha forgot what his name is. Hammerhead. Hammerhead, that's it, that's it. Like, he seems like, I don't know how he works specifically, but from your video, he might work like a, like a spring trap of sorts, where he, like, he can maybe go both sides and, like, you have to keep track of him. And, like, that's, you know, I kind of like that because it makes camera usage really important, and that's what I like. Yeah, and because there you, you do have to like pay close attention because like when you look at the cameras, it's one of those things where there's not a super obvious sound cue when he appears on on your on like the left or right side because um, sometimes like creepy music will play, but I think that's only if you're uh, you're looking at the camera he's in and then he disappears from that camera on um, you you the the middle is your office and then like cam 7a and 7b that's the left and right hallway and then say if he's in 7a and then he leaves that camera um while you're looking at him and he leaves that camera some creepy music will start playing to let you know that he's there but that doesn't happen all the time and i think i've noticed that if you're not watching him like there's nothing that plays at all when he appears on the um you know your left or right side so uh you, you gotta pay very close attention the game does require you to uh be very vigilant with your cameras which i which i like i like banana fan games that that do that that actually make the cameras useful the camera usage i would agree because there are like there is one fan game that i've played recently um i guess it'll be a tangent but there was a game called joy and me now, this one has also something unique that I don't see in a lot of fan games either. But it has it with the story. Because the way the story is, right, is that... Is, um, you have these, like, wooden mannequin dolls that haunt you in, like, your house or a hotel. I think it's a house, but maybe it's a hotel. But it's a wooden, like, mannequin doll that, like, haunts throughout during the nighttime. 
because it looks like oh it looks innocent during the day but during the night it's, it has like a demonic form and literally like the first thing that you see is like you play these eight bit mini games and you explore the house and then you literally see the first time like seeing this mannequin doll literally shredding something which afterwards you see it's the parents so you literally see your parents getting killed and then you have to like rush back in your room and then hide and then like use your light as a defense and i think what it does really well is like it builds a world that it has an original story because they're like oh what are these mannequins doing what are what are they doing why are they here and like why they're acting this way and a lot of fan games do the oh five kids died now they're stuffed in suits or something like that which is that's why i like this fan game because it has a nice fresh experience with the story and chapter one has been released but it's only been chapter one at the moment I just followed that game. Remember you uh, you suggested that in my in my Discord server on the uh, in the game suggestions, and uh, I just looked at it. It looks amazing. Like the graphics look really good. So. No, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna look into that. That, that. that looks interesting. All right, and that'll do it for our community tab questions. So let's move on to Twitter. So the first one is from Salotus Chaos, the homie. Uh, questions for the madman. His first one is, what upcoming FNAF fan games are you most interested in playing or completing? I assume that that's, you said that was Krusty Krab Chapter 3, but are there any other ones that you're interested in particularly? Uh, other ones, I gotta think. Well, I'm always like excited for Manic Mania Infinite. That's always going to be one that I'm yeah, really be good. interested to that'll see. Yeah, that'll be good. Yeah, that'll be a banger, straight up banger. Um... What other ones? Well, join me. If there if there is a chapter two, I'm a hundred percent looking forward to that. A hundred percent. Um, any other ones? Can't think of any top of my head. Well, more rights games, but I'm testing them, so I'm not sure if that counts really. You could say Lost One's Treasure Island, I'm sure that was that would count as yeah, one. Yeah, that yeah, that that one's like that one I'm looking forward to as well. Because it's really good at the moment. I've been enjoying testing it, so I would highly recommend for everyone to play it whenever it comes out. And his other question is, if there was one thing you could add to FNAF Custom Nights to improve them, what would it be? I, for example, would love to see Custom Night exclusive characters more often. There is a, actually a really interesting thing. So I play, I, I beta test like a different game. And that game like has a really like interesting like gimmick with the Custom Night. Like, because I do like uh, Custom Night exclusives as well. But one gimmick it has is with the presets. So, in most fan games, the presets are kind of, not to be too harsh, but kind of useless. And because everyone always looks, oh, let's do the older 20 mode. And that's it. And not experience anything else with the Custom Night. But this fan game that I was testing a while back, it has one really interesting gimmick. And that is, with each preset, there's like an added challenge to it like oh maybe the cameras are dark so there's like only audio you can detect there's like an extra challenge added upon like the ais that you have that's cool what, what game did you say that was again i mean i'm i mean i'll just say it. uh it's a game by ray the re it's a warrior game called uh the fun i think it's called fun of warriors the crowned misery i think that's what it is Huh. I have to look into that. That that, that seems pretty unique. I, I mean, you don't see a lot of that, really. I don't really can't think of any other FNAF fan game that does that. So the only one I know is Powerpuff Girls Four, but I think they're not like with the presets. I think they're just like their own standalone thing. I think. Gotcha. Because I think I yeah, because F Powerpuff Girls Four is the only. Powerpuff Girls game that has a custom night, so I'm interested to see what uh, what Babs did with that. And our next question is from Nintendo Boy. Uh, he has two as well. If there were at least two max modes that were the toughest to beat, which were they? Well, Chuck E. Cheese, obviously, that's gonna be that's yeah, 100 always Chuck E. Cheese. Always, always, always. That took me 20 hours, and I vividly remember those 20 hours, depending on it. I think another one was um, like Fortnite with Bud rebooted. I'm sure there'll be a question about 
god reboot at some point that i can go a little bit more into detail but doing pick size mini game or like the beat saber mechanic all my like towards the second half of the night my hands were shaking and i was so shaky that like i did it like i wanted to press like the right arrow keys but my arrow keys are so close together that i could have pressed like the left arrow key instead of the down arrow key and it just got me so nervous oh yeah dude like it, it, it's like that any any error like you, you you could barely brush like the other key and like it would count and like just oh it, it, it i'm surprised it works so well like because I, i've told people this many times just watching mickey code that was just a headache just to witness but he ended up making it work as well as it did but yeah all, all of that like stacked on top of everything else like geez man like the fact that you did that before the winston patch is is, is that that you're a wizard dude like i don't know how you did how did you do that seriously i i really want to know I, I wish i could know honestly i done it like i mean if you saw the ending it was literally almost like i almost died <laughs> Because I think the power got out, got cut out, and then like Mickey was gonna kill me, but I barely managed it. I think I remember watching that video, and like you, you were, <laughs> you could barely, you you could not can. I don't, I, I I just remember you being like just speechless, and. Oh no, I was, I was, no, like. <laughs> I'm sure there'll be a question about Bud Rebooted, but I'll explain this, I guess, now. But literally, like, there's a, there's, so once the 6 aim, like, arrives, and you know how they plays the ding, ding, or whatever, the ding dong, or whatever, yeah. right? In that, there's a moment where the audio cuts out. That audio was on me, because I literally, like, alt-tab real quickly to check if I was recording or not. Because ah. I was, like, panicky. I was like, am I, am I recording? What is going on? Dude, imagine sure. how that would have been if you finally beat it and then you realized you weren't recording. Oh, man. Oh, no. I would have been so sad. I mean, I would have recorded the post-night cutscene, but still been mad that I didn't get the winning run. Yeah, man. I, I don't I don't think that's... I don't think that's ever happened to me. Uh, But, like, there... Oh, there have been plenty of times that I, like, have recorded an entire episode of something and then I realized that, like, my audio, my mic audio wasn't recording or um i wasn't recording at all or like yeah that there, there's like that feeling in the pit of your stomach when you realize that like none of what you just did was recorded like it sucks dude oh i know it i've done that same mistake like as well oh jeez. all right and then nintendo boys other question is uh what is your favorite type of game genre Ooh. Platformers are always one I can always come back to. I always enjoy a good platformer once in a while. It's like my comfort food, you know? Oh, uh, yeah, so, so is Mario your comfort food then? It is, yeah, I would say so. Also, good RPG. I love RPGs. But they oh, dude, so RPGs are great. I love them. RP oh, I love RPGs and JRPGs. They're so good. So good. Like, my favorite ones are, like, the Persona series. Those are, like, amazing. There's just something that's so satisfying about, like, just defeating enemies and, like, just getting more and more powerful as you go along. No. Yeah, and getting, like, the XP beating bosses. Especially, like, if you put, like, time on grinding on a boss, right? And then you finally beat it, like, after hours of grinding. And, you're, like, you just get the euphoric feeling of, like, yes, I've done this. Yeah, this was me. I, I did this through skill and determination of, like, getting stronger and stronger. And, like, yeah, there, there's nothing like it, man. All right, our next question is from Cosmic Cowboy. Out of all the games you've mastered, which one felt the most rewarding to 100%? Um, I feel like I'm in Chuck E. Cheese, but, um... <laughs> Chuck E. Cheese. Because, because, no, literally, no, the, the... Because that was, like, the first game I've ever, like, actually, like optimize optimize because like you can up do like more like minor optimizations that the game doesn't tell you hey you can do this right but because this that was like the first fan game that i ever went to the custom night activated only one character and played with only one character because most of the time 
I just go all 20, boom, let's just do this for like seven hours. Usually I beat it in within that amount of time. But yeah, Chuck E. Cheese wasn't that. So it just felt great, like learning more like specific movements, how the characters work, how they do this. All right, our next question is from Shadow Jagger. What led you to become the Maximoth God and what exp what inspired you to do that? I think that's a bit of an over-exaggeration. I've seen many other people who are like, oh my god, what? I like how they can do manage to do this. Like, for example, like from prior before, Frogger25, I think he's much better at games than I am. I think like he's way more amazing than personally than I am. But like what led me to it was just, I don't know. I didn't really have it like anything. I kind of just played it. I don't know. I was like 100% in games. That's what I always like to do. And that's what led me to always beat the hardest modes as well, because that's part of the 100% completion. Gave him the third star or the third whatever it be in that game. All right. Our next one is from a uh, joke. Uh, they say uh, most fun with a max mode. What is what's the most fun you've ever had with a max mode? Um, we'll change it up because I always like to say different answers, but uh. As well with the recorded infinite, um, well, fun with Maniac Mania Infinite. I also had a lot of fun with the Mac Tonight games, to be honest. They're always so satisfying to beat. I think my favorite one from the time back in the day, I think, was Mac Tonight 1 Remastered. Oh, that dude, one that one's fun. Yeah. That one's so satisfying. 730 with the Grimace as well, like the speaker's audience when rebooting so good it's literally like that one is literally like a rhythm game so good yeah that's usually like i've been super frustrated trying to beat mickey's all max modes but like yeah 730 mode of mac tonight remastered is probably the most entertaining max mode it's like oh, it, yeah, it's it it's really hard but like it, it you can it's definitely probably the most doable one if like it's definitely the most skill based if you ask me, because you had to constantly be checking for grimace, and then you know, be very careful with you know how many times, like it, like you used the uh, like the speaker repair like two or three times, and you're like, okay, I should probably repair it now while I have time, and it's just, yeah, it's very strategy and skill based, so it's probably the most entertaining one. Would you agree? Yeah, I would say so. I would say so. We'll see how it is with two remastered. Maybe getting the buff in the future. So we'll see how that will be. Yeah, and I, I definitely will will play it again if he if he buffs it. We'll see if I'm if I still got it. <laughs> the crown. <laughs> yeah, the crown will be slipping if he does that. I gotta gotta adjust it. But <laughs> all right, our next one is from Infinator Gaming. Which max mode was the hardest of all the Finance at Wario's games that you've played? Wario's. Cool. To be. Uh let me try to remember there's so many because like it depends on what you consider because there's a lot of like not to say warrior 3s games but there were like i don't know if you remember in warriors 3 but within the all out mode you have to do like 12 nights in a row like i don't know if you would consider that as one max mode or not y yeah but i would me, i would think so yeah all right then I think one that I haven't tried yet, that I should have tried, but I didn't, was um, Final to Warriors The Clock. That's that's a doozy one, because you literally have to play 30 nights, quote-unquote, <laughs> to beat three all on all three different modes. Because the way the all-out mode works is, um, so you beat, so you beat it on the normal difficulty, and then once you activate like all max mode, you just have to do the whole thing again, just on the maximum difficulty of each hour. And then like within the game, each hour, which is the night pretty much, uh, it, like the way the game works is it works completely different upon each hour you enter in. Okay. So that one is just, you always need to adapt to new game mix. Okay. All right. Our next one is from Google Corn. Most anticipated game in general. It doesn't have to be a FNAF or FNAF fan game. Ooh. Hmm. That's a hard one. I always enjoyed, like, the Mario Strikers games. And I'm really looking forward to the new one that's coming out in um, June. But I'm also a little bit concerned with it because 
They've been doing the Mario Sport games a little bit, you know, dirty to say. Like, Aces, Golf Rush. Like, those games were rushed out, and I'm a little bit concerned about this one. Yeah, Other the, the that, new one looks good, I, I, I would agree. Uh, we'll have yeah, to see no, what they game, do. No, like, gameplay-wise, it looks good. I'm only concerned about, like, content. <laughs> if there's enough content to warrant the, like, $60 price tag. Yeah, because we don't want them to do a pull another Super Mario Party where there was like, oh there's, god, gosh, don't remind me, gosh, it's like why people the 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 worst thing about that game is the price. Seriously, like oh, it's yeah. there's like not enough stuff in it to it's like that the, the amount of content in that game originally probably warranted like twenty dollars. There's no way there was enough in there to to ask for sixty. Like no, it's it's so bad that one, especially now we got like. The super super, what's the new one called? Like Super Mario Party or something? Superstar. Yeah, Mario Party Superstars. Yeah. Yeah, like that one is like ten billion times better, <laughs> and it was just a remake. And but and I wonder the people who spent sixty dollars on Super Mario Party probably feel very cheated. Uh yeah, I felt cheated. <laughs> I was one of them. Boy, Nintendo never learns. Good lord. <sighs> And uh, online and just about everything. Yeah, especially with online. The game, I don't Well, I can't remember if the game originally had online. Probably did, but like Superstar just did everything better. Like, there's no point of buying the other one. Super Mario Party. Yeah, the, that's, that's, that's bad. They've got like a, an entire game just sitting there that nobody's going to play because the, the newer one is just completely superior in every every fashion. That's just, that's not good. Come on, Nintendo. That's uh, not that's not good, yeah. Nintendo. Hopefully, Breath of the Wild 2 will be good because if they if they do something with that, oh, God. Oh, if they mess that up, they're they're putting the final nail in the coffin. I'm telling you. Oh, man. yeah, no. No, Nintendo fans will riot like with how, if that's bad. Especially with the delay that it's gotten, dude. I sh I, I I shed a couple tears when they said they were delaying it to 2023. Uh, I I will not lie, you know, being such I, a being such a huge yeah. Zelda fan and all. Oh no, I would understand as well. But I'm like, at least you have the slither of hope. You're like, all right, they're making the game better, right? Please, they, please, they better, man, they better. All right, our next questions are from. Gosh, Exori. Uh, 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 I, I I hope I pronounced your name right, oh, man. Hiori. Hiori, probably. Hiori. Hiori. I think. I think that's it. I I've never been able to pronounce his name right, so I, I hope that that's that's. I hope I got it right there. Uh, so they've got three questions. If you could come back to play one single FNAF fan game again, which one would it be and why? That's hard. If I could like erase my memory from like remembering. Oh, I always enjoy the warrior games like five shows of warriors will be like one I always enjoy but that one the amount of content it has oh my god it feels like I'm about to give a hot take but the amount of content that it has it's kind of hurts it itself in a sense because that game has like five modes and it's like what <laughs> when like fan games don't barely even have one well, they only have one. Yeah, but and then one, Director's Cut yeah. added so much more to it as well. Yeah, nah. Yeah, literally, like, five modes, and you're like... This this game will take me, like, a month. What is this? A JRPG? <laughs> yeah, dude. There's, like, there's so much stuff. My God, man. Yeah. W, w, like, Andy just went all out with that. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it makes sense. It's the finale, right? You gotta, you know, go all out. Mm-hmm. Alright, this next question is, what type of other games do you enjoy? You said you enjoyed platformers. Is there anything else besides that? Platformers, RPGs are always fun. Uh, anything else other than that? Mario Kart, ain't it? That's a classic. But that's not a genre. Uh, it just, I think platformers and RPGs are always my favorite. They, they've been the things I've grown up, uh, grown up with. Gotcha. And then his last question is, why are you so good at Clash Royale? Oh my god. Well, there's a thing called, you play the game for six years, you watch tech videos, you practice the game day and day. You will eventually become somewhat good at the game, at least you would hope so, spending six years on playing a game. 
Yeah, if you're if you're not good at playing a game after six years, uh, that you that you you're doing something wrong. <laughs> yeah. Nah. All right. Next question is from Luigi Aiden. What was the first FNAF fan game you ever played, and what's your favorite FNAF fan game? First one. Oh god, I gotta like remember, because. I got into the fan games when Warriors Origins was being developed and was getting released for June. So I'd probably play Warriors 1 if I had to guess first. If I had to take a guess. Or Sonic's 1. One of the two. Yeah, I think Warriors 1 was... Or it may have been the original financial treasure island maybe that was the first one i ever played it was either that or warriors one of those two yeah because warriors was like january like very early january i think yeah it was like january 6 2015 it's like the first week yeah. of january yeah something like that all right and what was his what i think he had another question i forgot no, that was well. His, your uh, his fa your favorite FNAF fan game. That was the other question. Ah, okay. Well, Warriors, isn't it? It's always Warriors. Mhm. Mm it's not Chuck E. Cheese. No. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next question is from Piggy and Squiddy. Two kings collide. I can't wait to see. I have one more question since I'm based on Discord. Okay. Has there been one Maximo that gave you trouble in your span of games beaten? And that's definitely Chuck E. Cheese, right? Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> the max mode is called a true nightmare, and that that name is quite fitting. It I does not say. disappoint. No, it doesn't. Gosh, I gotta go see how that is. Then you're making me curious uh, to see just how hard it is. See, no, no. I think you'll be able to beat up to the six twenty mode, but after that, I don't even know what you. <laughs> <sighs> we'll have to see. Like, I've heard people struggle on 620 mode. Like, the normal nightmare mode. Oh, so so uh, so normal 620, uh, like that's not even the hardest? No. No, so it adds, like, custom night exclusives to the game. Oh, okay. So 1020 is, like, with everyone. 620 is with the original, like, five night cast that you play with. All right, and our last question on Twitter is, uh, which all max mode in a FNAF fan game was the most satisfying for you to complete? I mean, Chuck E. Cheese, like, I literally, I think I was, like, probably yelling with, um, with happiness. But I think another one to top it off, like, almost too close to top it off was Bud Rebooted. I literally got up and just went around being like, oh, my God. Because <laughs> I was just like, is this real? I can't remember if I've ever, like, gotten out of my chair and, like, ran around celebrating. Uh, I, I, I can't remember if I've ever done that. I remember when I beat the all-max mode of um, the original Maniac Mania, I remember, like, taking my headphones off and, like, leaning out of my chair. And, like, it was... <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I, I think that's probably the most celebratory I've ever been. Like, I can't remember what that. I don't think, I think I, uh, I celebrated a lot for Bud's Rebooted, but I don't think I took my headphones off. I think Maniac Mania yeah, is the only time I ever did. did that. Yeah, I literally did the get out of the chair, go around, and be a celebrity. Jeez, man, I can only imagine. All right, we're going to move on to our Discord questions. These are our last ones for today. Uh, the first one is from uh, Cats Eat Me Out Mix. Hi, how are you? Uh, doing pretty all right over here. Doing pretty good. It's a lovely afternoon over here. Yeah, it's really weird because I, when we're recording this, it's 10.20 p.m. And then for Costa, he's in Australia, so it's like the middle of the afternoon for him yeah it's literally middle of the day it, it, it's like probably like what like 3 3 p.m for you uh, no nah, it's like one jeez man time zones are time weird. zones ain't it i'm telling time you zones. you love them don't you oh yeah they're amazing all right next questions are from picky and squiddy again um he says costa why are you so based beating max modes like it's a yamka what is a yamka I, I, I wish I knew. I wish I could tell you, but I don't. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I guess we'll just say, uh, why are you so based beating max modes then? Just naturally talent, ain't it? Just too good. Too yeah. good. 
Yeah, raw <laughs> raw natural talent, something I do not have. Nah, I'm sure I'll make I'll make you do one. I'll make you do one. I'll make you do a max mode. I'll mm. challenge you. Okay. <laughs> All right. This next one is uh, how long have you been beating max modes in general? Uh, six years probably. I know 2017. I used to do it a lot, but I'm not sure if I did. It. No, I think it was like towards the end of 2016. That's when I like started. Okay, and then uh, which max modes do you look forward to in the future? Frosted Crab, that's going to be another one. Amazing. Uh, Recoded Infinite. I mean, Infinite. <laughs> Keep calling Recoded Infinite. Uh, other ones? Let me think. I can't, like... i got to still beat Treasure Island, like the lost ones. I still got to beat that, and that's going to be... Hell. <laughs> I've actually, you never beaten that. I, I've actually, I have beaten a max mode that you haven't. That's that's strange. <laughs> which one? Wait, which one? I, no, no, I can't let this happen. No, 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 no. The, Wait, is it the the are you talking about the the original? Uh, lost oh ones? no, the, I haven't even touched the original. So yeah, you have actually done that. Yeah, and then um, lost ones remastered. Yeah, lost ones remastered. I have to do. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, I, I wow. There is a and th that that game has a five thirty mode as well. Just letting you know. Uh, hey. <laughs> uh, oh, I, yeah, no, I did beat the yeah, beat the original version of the Lost Ones. I never played the remastered. All right, so that's one max mode that I've beaten that Costa hasn't. <laughs> okay, that that's a that's an accomplishment for me. <laughs> <laughs> Taken. <laughs> All right, our next question is from Weed Chips. How does it feel to know that I am the superior beta tester? And what game have you enjoyed testing the most? You know, that's kind of extra doubt because let's be real. If I didn't exist and I was testing before you, you wouldn't be testing as many games as I was. I'm too based over here. Mm. Take this comment. Mm. Too based. And what was the other question I forgot already? He said, um, what game have you enjoyed <laughs> testing the most? Oh, that's so hard. I've been enjoying another Warrior game. I test a lot of Warrior games. Uh, the Abandoned Factory. Uh, no, I think that's what it's called. The Abandoned Factory Nevermore. That's the name. That one has an actual, like, very unique gimmick that no FNAF fan games have ever done in my life. That I at least have seen. Like, I'm being genuine in that one. <laughs> Because there is a demo at the moment, so it's not spoilery, so I can talk about this. But in this game, you have to not only protect yourself, you have to protect someone else as well. While you're surviving, so it's just really cool gimmick, honestly. Yeah. What game is this? Uh, the Abandoned Factory, Nevermore. It's not out at the moment. It should be out, hopefully, within maybe like two months, maybe. That is that does sound really cool. I gotta look into that. Yeah, I know for sure. You will enjoy it. Alrighty, our next one is from uh Gojira Fan 1984. How do you not go insane? I have gone insane. Please, please send help. I, I really need help. I've gone <laughs> literally too insane, please. <laughs> I mean, considering you sat there for 20 hours trying to beat the Chuck E. Cheese Max mode, I, I, I'm, I'm, I don't know how you're not in an institute. Please help. <laughs> <laughs> All right, our next one is from Colton slash Catbot. How do you have you practiced before doing the Max modes? I would assume that they those take a lot of practice. I mean, for Make Mania Infinite. Uh... The first time that I beat it, I literally just said, no, let's just get right into it. <laughs> I literally didn't even practice. I just went into it. And How? Didn't... I can barely do it. Like, I can barely get to 1 a.m. without dying. How do you do this, man? Good Lord, man. Gosh. I'm jealous. I wish I had the skills. That's yeah, not like, too... you just have to like, Cause, I mean, you didn't know a lot of things. Like, you didn't know that you could close the door in Nightmare. So, you know. that. Oh, I, you mean hiding under the desk. I did not know that was a thing. Oh, hiding under the desk. That's it. Yeah, that's the one. I did not know you could do that originally. Yeah. So that's good. I think it's also the fact that you just put... It's just like... It's like FNAF 2, really. You just put the camera down, put the mask on. 
It's also annoying like timers as well. Like how long does someone take to kill like Nightmare Tales, Luigi in it? They take about one in-game hour, so if you reach 6 a.m. and you're about to run out of power, you can just leave them alone. And then you'll be fine. All right. Next question is from Osha. What max modes gave you the most trouble and were the most frustrating? Okay, Chuck E. Cheese. Uh, were there any other ones? Uh, Chuck, uh, I think. Uh, oh, okay. I remember. I haven't. We haven't talked about this one. But the original lost ones. <laughs> oh, one. dude, that gives me PTSD. Oh my god. I, <laughs> I don't even know how I beat it. I got so lucky and I beat it. I don't even know, honestly. Dude, that's like, I, that was one of Mickey's most luck-based games ever. Oh yeah, no, it was. It was the face. Worst thing in the game ever. It's like, the fact that, at least in Lost Ones Remastered, it gave you a way to to prevent face from getting in, but, like, the, the OG did not. And, like, yeah. that was just completely up to luck. Like, I would die... die I would die... Like, and that was back when, uh, the, the nights were like eight minutes long. Like it oh, was, yeah, no, those are hell. and then, and like, yeah, I, I would be at 5 AM, like 10 seconds away from winning. And then face would come in and I'd be dead. Like there was, yeah. Then like Henry do. comes in and then you're like, well, I can't put the speaker. What am I doing? Oh man. I'm glad Mickey has learned to you know make games a little more skill based these days yeah because seems like there's a theming with it max tonight one remastered way to get rid of grimace the original you couldn't yeah mm, the original theming dude like my god the amount of times i got screwed over by grimace too it's like oh that one i still haven't beat <laughs> the original i didn't beat the original really okay that's two then all right, that's two that I have under my belt that you haven't beaten. Okay. Yeah, no, I haven't. I couldn't be bothered. I was like, no, nah, I can't handle this grimace nonsense. Let me just eat. All right, and our next one is from Doc Holiday, aka Cubby. What inspired you to become a YouTuber? Well, glad someone asked this one because it is actually quite ironic <laughs> on the story. So there's many different, like, there's like three major points that i had so one of them was just i did as a joke it was just entirely based off a joke uh the second one was the fact that i wanted to gain like a, a new skill uh of like editing and you know recording videos and all that and the third one the third reason why i started it was because of a youtuber i don't know if you heard of these guys but you might have not it's very very niche man called the next genius i don't know if you've heard of him but yeah he's who's, who's the main that reason. sounds like an idiot and uh call him the next genius no <laughs> but yeah he, he you were literally the, the main inspiration on that as well really that's because, awesome yeah no nah, yeah because back then i was like i remember this guy called next genius he had 2000 subs he seems like he was having fun with doing this i can have fun yeah, I, I mean, yeah, life is fun. I can make fun out of life. Right. Yeah, let, let me try this a little, this YouTube thing. Let me let me try ha see how it is. This new trendy uh, thing called YouTubing. Yeah, I don't know what that be. Mm. And yeah, that's how it was. Yeah, it was because pr pretty much entirely of you that I saw. Well, let's just do this. Well, that's awesome, man. That that that's that is flattering. Um, that 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 is cool to hear. Um. And sounds like you're still having just as much fun nowadays as you did before. Oh, yeah, no, I do. I do. All right. Next question is from Genius Sign Creator, a.k.a. Damien. What was the easiest max mode for you? Okay. You're... Okay, actually, that, no, that's not easiest. But I did first try this one. You, you're not going to believe what I'm about to say. But I was playing Max Tonight 1 Remastered. And I was doing 7.20 and 7.30 back to back. And I beat those on my first try somehow. Both. Well, the, I'm I'm more surprised about 7:30. I actually beat 7:20 in about 20 minutes. It didn't take me that long. Um, yeah, no, 7:20 is not that bad. And 7:30, 7:30 actually, it didn't. 
I, I did both 720 and 730 in like one stream. I don't know if you remember that stream, but I yeah, did. Yeah, I think you did like an hour and 40 you did or something, right? Well, it was it was a short stream because it, I, I beat both of them so quickly that I decided to play like Sonic's Pizzeria Simulator afters. Oh my and, God, wow. But like, it, it took me like an hour to beat both of those. And like- That's actually- not bad yeah it, it it wasn't it was it was it, i i was surprised but yeah um while i am jealous that you beat both of them first try i also it, i i agree it's while it's it's very hard it's also as we have talked about um pretty skill based no least. no it is it is the only luck based thing is maybe like oh you reboot the speaker at a bad time mac comes to the door as soon as you're rebooting it oh dude that's the worst because he can like teleport that's mm. the only issue yeah all right next question is from piracy golem 101 what inspired you to be such a masochist mm, i wonder who i had no inspiration i just decided why not uh let's just take up on a new geek ain't it and it's like i like pain i love torturing yeah. myself so much fun ain't it you get this thing called clout. <laughs> ah, yes, clout. In response, yeah, well, in, you yeah. just destroy myself for the clout. Yeah, <laughs> going mentally insane. All right, next question is from Jack Gaming. How did it feel beating Chuck E. Cheese's rebooted True Nightmare twice in a row? Uh, that was pretty all right. Uh, not pretty all right. It was, it was really frustrating because the antivirus was the thing that broke again, like tw twice. It, it did. So the antivirus thing I mentioned, it did that twice in a row. Not only once, twice. And that made me really frustrated because I couldn't get the cutscene. And then I just had to like Google the cutscene and watch it on YouTube. Jeez. I had to Google the cutscene for after night six of Five Nights with 39 because I could never beat night oh. six because of how luck based it was. What an amazing cutscene that is. Oh yeah, it's so worth it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so good ain't it oh yeah all right this one's from uh kirby genius what are your honest thoughts on games that somewhat rely on luck and or rng particularly hard games uh this is this is a dizzy topic because sure can make like all entirely like i'll be like oh this is all skill based everything but I do feel like there will always be some level of luck. Like some minor luck, I like I don't mind. But like, let's say something, for example, our favorite example, Mac Tonight 1, Grimace. That I don't like. That's what I don't like. Mechanics where they don't fuse well together. As long as the mechanics fuse well together, they're fine. And then if there's some like minor RNG there, like, or maybe a character move a little bit quicker than usual. Stuff like that, I don't mind. But if it's like Grimace level, then no. All right, next one's from Random. What FNAF fan game has been your favorite to play? And if there's too many to count, what have been your favorites throughout each year? Uh, 2016, I can just, I'll probably list serious. 2016 Warriors, 2017, probably the Mac tonight. That was like amazing. I loved those back then, back in the day. 2018, I don't remember what games were released. That's too long ago. Um, maybe, maybe that was Titan Sons. Titan Sons is a really good FNAF fan game. That one I really enjoy. Um, uh, what other ones? 2019, like there's just too many. Like I enjoy those nights of randoms. I enjoyed the one that Random made. That one's actually like, a lot of fun. That one's good, yeah. Yeah, it's getting a new version apparently, so that's going to be fun to look forward to. All right, next one is from Nami1. How did you react when you beat 720 mode on Buds Rebooted before the Winston patch? We talked about this briefly, but you said you, like, was that when you yeah. jumped up and ran around your room? Yeah, no, literally, yeah, I literally got up, got off and then literally just went around. I'm like, oh my god, I actually did this? What? <laughs> And you were the like, first to do it, right? I, I think you were yeah, the first yeah, one. Yeah, the first. Well, first with VD. I think there was some, like, stuff about, like, oh, you know, I was the first person to be with, like, proof that I, you know, hey, it's this. Yeah, I don't think anybody else think, had uploaded the, the post-night cutscene for that. Yeah, no. I think I was the first to do that, for sure. Like, I know that. With, like, video proof with the run and the post-night cutscene and then just about everything. 
Gotcha. All right, next one is from Wily Dog. How did you get so good at max modes? Was it given by God himself? I think it might have been the latter. <laughs> but, I mean, I did have some, like, skills with it. Like, it just takes a lot of practice. Precise mouse movements. Because at the end of the day, it's just being precise with the mouse. That's all it is. Like, it's not too bad. Like... I feel like you could be good at max modes. I feel like you can do it. You can do it. Yeah, I can do like some. It depends, but... Like, you've been in. You've been in quite a few. Like, I feel like you have the potential. Yeah, well, we'll It just we'll takes see. a lot of practice. It does. And something, and something called, hey, I have a life. <laughs> I can't yeah. dedicate this amount of hours. Adulting be hard. Yes, it is. It do be. All right, our last but not least question is from Mr. Wolfolds. What were some of the more balance-like max modes you have conquered, ones that really took some time but weren't causing near disillusion? That and what was your favorite cartoon show to watch when you were growing up? Well, I guess I can say the cartoon one real quickly. I always enjoy SpongeBob. That's always the thing I have a nostalgia for. SpongeBob, always a good time for me to watch. What about you, bud? What was your favorite one? Favorite cartoon show? Oh, man. Uh, I had a lot. Uh, I actually... I didn't really watch a whole lot of cartoons growing up, but... Uh, I'd have to see... Hmm. There were, there were multiple ones. I was more of a Disney Channel kind of guy. No, oh, I, yeah. I, I watched, um, you know, Zack and Cody and w Wizards of oh, Waverly yeah. Place, and... Uh, but, I mean, those weren't, like, cartoons. Those were, like, uh, Disney Channel shows. If I had to make a cartoon, Phineas and Ferb was, like, my jam. I know I wasn't, like, a little mm. kid when that was going on, but, like, I was, like, 12 or 13 during that time. But, dude, Phineas and Ferb is, is, was a good show. It actually ended a while back, but, yeah, I'd probably have to say Phineas and Ferb, probably. Okay. Uh, oh, what was, I'm forgetting already. I'll balance max mode, like, balance, like, max mode. Uh. I mean, Chuck E. Cheese wouldn't be the answer because that was uh, that was a bit questionable there because it did like it was rushed. It was rushed because of um what you because it was meant to. It came out July fourth and it came out for that time specifically. But I only have like beaten like the the furthest someone has gotten in the beta, which was me, was um I got up to like the fourth custom night challenge and that was it so no one has even tested like the true true max mode so that one wasn't balanced um what other ones were there other natural balance mode uh, let me i can't even think because the, like balance like that's a, like does that mean like no rng some rng or does it like i, I think probably intent? like uh just little to no rng like there is skill based um i would say if it is i would say i enjoy like warriors origins yeah warriors origins is like a really fun game to just like chug through that's how a lot of the warriors games are in my opinion yeah no they are i mean with the newer version of like warriors 3 for example it has become a little bit harder but for the most part it's been like really good Alrighty, well that does it for all of the questions. Um, th there were some good ones this time. I I'm, I'm glad that y'all have uh, still been participating in all these episodes. Casa, this is great, man. This is a unique episode. I think a lot of people are going to be interested in hearing about, you know, the behind the scenes of the Max Mode King. And uh, I think th the thing to take away from this is uh, Chuck E. Cheese Max Mode is hard. That's that's what we can probably just. The, the biggest thing I can remember from this and uh, that's probably your most claim to fame I would think yeah, is beating is. that yeah most people would also agree with me I can I can assure you <laughs> if you asked anyone who has beaten it they would instantly agree with me for sure all right well um again casa great to have you on man uh, I will link your YouTube channel and Twitter in the description of this video if y'all would uh, like to go and check out 
um, videos that you've done on Max Modes and such, and I, I assume your video on Chuck E. Cheese is up. So if, if you, anybody wants to go check out your reaction to beating that, that's probably that is on your channel along with the Buzz rebooted and uh, probably all that stuff. Um, I don't know who I'm going to be doing for the next episode, but uh, I will announce it uh, when the time comes. And again, if you'd like to participate in future episodes, be sure to look out for those posts and drop your questions there. Um, hope y'all have a great afternoon. Thanks for listening. And uh, yeah, please, go check out Costa. He's a great guy. Got some good content. And um, it's very entertaining watching people beat these really hard modes. So if you're into that, I would recommend checking them out. Um, you got anything else you want to add, Costa? Uh, for match modes, if anyone wants to... Any tips for them real quickly... Like, as much as this might be, like, tedious to do, I would suggest, like, go in the custom night, put, a, like, a, like, a combo, like, two certain characters on, or, like, one certain character on, on 20, and then just keep doing it over and over and over and over again, just to practice on them and see how they act, see how they behave and everything. Because that, then you might find some strategy, some optimization you can do. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll try that. That's good. That's good advice. Alrighty, everybody. Thank you guys for listening. Hope you'll have a good morning, afternoon, or evening, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, everybody. Goodbye.